because these device manufacturers really there's no imperative yet for them to actually do the trial for them financially it is just isn't uh, worthy or practical to spend money to get an indication on label if you were for an iliac stent at the current time and as long as they're able to sell these devices and their ability opportunities for physicians to implant them and treat disease and get good results that's sort of the less than ideal but the sort of metastable state we exist in when we come to doing a trial however you can't use anything that's unapproved so for example angioplasty or stenting for jugular veins really we have to go through regulatory bodies to ensure that this trial meets the rigor of scientific investigation and I think that's where we are now and that's where we should be and I don't in any way decry that I willingly and voluntarily pledge that we would do no more patients and that we put all further patients into this trial because now I felt confident that we had that observational experience to allow us to make a trial Right. So is there a role for these device makers to play? In well, uh, there's, there's, there is a role, but it would be, uh, I, I'm not sure we can really define that role yet because it requires, uh, it requires actually better understanding of what is, re is necessary for any device, okay? If we got, for example, the balloons we're going to use in this trial our commodity right now. So from an individual device manufacturer to think they could develop something specialized, unique, proprietary, protectable when it comes to a balloon, we don't really have an idea of, of what might be necessary. When it comes to a stent, until we fully understand, which we won't until we get into these variety of trials, the exact nature of the narrowing, the location of the narrowing, the cause of the narrowing, it's, it's premature to think about designing a device for an unclear limitation of the current ones, you know? So we really have to, I think, have uh, a little more sophisticated uh, intelligence about what is really going to be best used to treat these narrowings and what the limitations of currently available commodity devices are for a device manufacturer to see an opportunity that they might... Uh, be uh, willing to uh, uh, develop a customized device for this application. Uh, within, when you're doing your trial and, and, and the plans for the trial, is there a great degree of communication between perhaps your trial and what some other people are trying to do around your country, let's say North America and the world? Well, we have a lot of communication with Canada. Uh, we're very close working with Vancouver and I have a close friend there and I'm actually a consultant on their trial design that's been uh, put in in the province of Vancouver. Uh, we obviously have uh, had dialogues with people in Hamilton as you're well aware and uh, Toronto uh, in North America really in New York it, well, all of the sites it's, it's as you might expect in these early stages there's a closely held group of the sort of the I don't know what you call it. Call it. I, I don't want to glorify it, but you know that first round of innovators. Uh, yeah, I don't want to. You know the first group. So we learn from each other, and we stay in close communication by email, et cetera, to make sure that we learn from each other's experience. And yes, you're absolutely right. Most sites are now. Uh, I don't. I don't like the word shut down so much, but are now in a period of of looking forward to the next steps of trials. Some sites are still going forward and we rely upon them and their intelligence that they're gathering to keep us, you know, to move forward. Because when you're not doing patients and you're not able to study, there's just no way to move forward. Uh, it's not the same like you can develop a, an animal model for this. Right. Last question. Um, what would you tell someone that has MS today that was seeking a treatment? Well, I think the first thing is that uh, you're going to hear more and more about this. A lot of people come to this with a variety of experiences from reading everything on the Internet to basically just being recently exposed to it and trying to understand what this is all about. The patients who are initially treated were the ones who took the highest risk, and we're clearly indebted to them for their willingness to go forward with a completely unproven, untested trial. 
So their risk reward equation was very high on the risk. I, I guess you might say for those who had some benefit in symptoms, they got a reward that, you know, at least, uh, well, maybe not commensurate, they were at least treated early on. The group that comes now, in point of fact, as you say, there are no options currently at this snapshot in time. But going forward, there will be trials developed in many different uh, locations around North America, uh, depending on their own circumstances. Obviously, there are lots of places that are doing this around the world. Unfortunately, those sites that are working now uh, and doing patients tend to be highly overly subscribed. So it's not like you can just, okay, I'm going to go to some other place in Europe or in the Middle East and get this done because everyone has that same idea. I think there's a real opportunity to just sit back and try not to be anxious, to try and take this in, not to become uh, uh, obsessed with or, or, you know, with when it's going to be done, but rather take the opportunity to learn as these go forward and pick carefully and try and advocate in local communities to get, as in Hamilton and elsewhere, centers of excellence that are going to prepare themselves and show a real desire to move forward with a trial. And then to get local support, because I'm telling you, funding is going to be a very big issue. And if they can sort of focus on that aspect of it, and that will sustain them until the appropriate trial and their appropriate opportunity presents itself. Dr. Dake, thank you very much for your time. It's been uh, most enjoyable hearing your views and most useful. Thank you again. Well, thank you. And again, congratulations on yesterday's symposium. I'm sure it was a wonderful event. And I'm just sorry I couldn't have been there in person. And again, because of my travel, this is the best we could do. But it was, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Good Thanks luck. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye.